Hello guys, this is Exodor, aka Bad in English Pan. Well, uh, in, this vid in this second video, I will show you how to do the second world, which is the Aztec era. Alright, so once you finish the Viking world and return back to Greenwich, you are there. Remember that you need to have bugs alive because Taz can do anything. Okay, so you just walk down the stairs and go there. And jump, zoom a little bit, and then jump. You can see that on the stairs, well, it's actually a slope. Bugs and Taz, as well, is uh, slower. To avoid that, you can just jump. When you jump, your speed is really a bit lower than when you are walking. But uh, in this case, jumping is faster. Alright, so to enter the first world, we're supposed to collect 10 gears which basically means co to complete the tutorial but we don't want to so we just found a faster way to do so but we so what you have to do is go there take bugs and throw it at a particular angle so bugs will perform what we call a throw out bounds it's just a construction of throw and out of bounds so what you have to do is to throw bug so that it will hit the walls and uh, bounce on Taz's, on Taz's head and then you take control of bugs and go in the Aztec era. This should look like this, but I failed it because my angle was not the right angle. This is not something easy, you just have to try and go for it. Okay, so you can see I'm out of bound, I could have gone to the Aztec era. What I recommend you to do, if you're a beginner, is once you're out of hand, like this, you just fall down and do a warp. Quick reminder for to, to warp, you have to be at the low speed when you reach the bottom of the map and you'll get to the top of the map like this. If you're not at a low speed, you will just spawn warp, like this. Alright, so you just warp and go to the loading zone. If you want to to be faster, what you can do is, as soon as you throw, bu as you throw bugs, you take control of bugs and go to the to the loading zone without uh, warping. This is obviously faster, but it's not too easy to do. Well, it's not uh, that hard, but you know, it needs practice. Once you enter this world, take control of tags because it is faster. And, to, and talk to Tweety here. This Tweety teach you, yeah, to bounce on Tess's head. You just need to jump on uh, to jump on it, and you can see you bounce much higher than when you used to do. Once this is done, take control of bugs and charge the roll. Here, rolling is faster because we have to travel a bit of distance. And you go here to the level of the Aztec era Babon Ring. Well, there, uh, there is a lot to cover on this stage. As the Moon Valley, you have to fight the boss, which is locked in his cell, and so you have to turn on three switches, which in this case are a series of statue, like this one. Alright, so. In Babon Realm, you cannot call uh, the other character everywhere. You can hear the, that sound. The, I'm trying to call Tess and I can't because I'm not at a good spot. So the game just is just telling me, nope, you can't. Alright, so what I do to begin this level is I work like this and keep mashing the call button. And eventually you will call Tess somewhere around this. We need to turn on this, this statue. To do so, what we need to do is first, you see this switch, you need to go on it with Taz. I can't do it right now because of the baboon you may see in the background, so I just want to, fin to finish explaining before doing it. And spin three times to make the statue in the right spot. Then you have to throw a coconut you can take the coconut here with bugs and throw it in the statue's mouth. So, this should look like this. You go there with bugs, you keep mashing call. 
and the baboon saw me. The baboon will say so you will try to crush you like this and if he managed to do it we'll have this animation during which he just uh, don't do anything which is cool. Let me explain you have to turn on this switch. If, it, if the baboon hits you you, you will have enough time to do to do the other things you have to do before uh, before it will act again. So once this is done, take control of the bugs and throw the coconut in the statue. We have to be quick, otherwise the statue will uh, turn like it did. Alright, so we'll just get rid of this baboon even before it's slower. You can see the sleeve here, there is a trap underneath. So you just uh, have to make the baboon go here. Okay. So, take the coconut, spin, if you can see the baboon is about to hit you, let it do so. If you try to attack the baboon, it will just, uh, you will just lose time. So, three spins, then you go in front of the statue and throw the coconut. There are several things you can do to throw your coconut at the right spot. You can take it and hold the two camera button just to aim precisely where you want. You don't need to release the camera button, you just need to hit the attack button. Well, not not this time, uh, never mind. Once you're correctly... you are at the cut angle, you can throw the coconut. But you, this is not something I, I don't recommend to do, to be honest, because the angle is pretty wide. You can throw the coconut like this and the statue will just show it no matter if you you don't need to be right in front of the statue so once this is done you can do a few things first thing you can do is with bugs well, well the baboon is in the trap here but usually it's not the case so what you may want to do is just to work at this place with bugs and then charge a roll. So if the baboon comes uh, to and try to attack you, it will just fall in the trap. So charge a roll and go this way. That's some those true bridges. Here you call Taze, bounce on top of it, and Taze is dead. Okay. Reminder, if one of the characters die, you can uh, respawn him by finding a box. Then you charge another roll. You go there. You go that here. And you work on this switch, which opens the gate for the third theory of statue. Then you take control of Taz, call bugs, and take control of bugs to climb here. Now there are two statues. When you, you activate the first one, which I failed, <laughs> alright, you have a few seconds to do the other one. Don't worry, you have plenty of time to do this. You can even, uh, let's say, I fall down. Ah no, I fell down. You can walk here, and you still have the time. All right, that's it for the second set of statue. Now, we have to go to the third set. But before we do so, I will just explain the other strat that you can do. What I showed you is um, the easiest way of ge to get here. But it's also the slowest. Well, it's not that slow, but it's still something. Something you can do, which saves uh, around three seconds, I think. After the first statue, you just go there, jump and dive to swim. It's important to be underwater because it's faster. You go up here, and around this side, you can call Taze. So you just have to do so. And with Taze, you go here at this spot, and you will do a kinda precise dive jump. Alright, so, reminder, a dive jump is when you jump and then dive when you're about to fall. This, 
this way you make a small hub which allow you to, to go a little bit higher when uh, we do this after bouncing on Taz's his head I just call this a bouncing dive jump alright so we are aiming to reach this place so this is what we what we need to do but this is kind of precise like I said because if you hit the wall during the well, I completely messed up this so if you hit the wall during the dive animation which I did not do you cannot go any further you will just glide around the wall so you need to make sure you are high enough to reach the platform before touching the wall that's why Taze is not, is not uh, right next to the wall. By the way, this, uh, this little place where I'm like right here is a bit uh, funky. So, don't mind it, it's really nothing. So, you do a bounce dive jump like this, then you call Taze. Once again, it's to. So, so you can act during this animation uh, funny. You call Taze. Oops. You go like this, call bugs here, and turn on the switch, and then it's basically the same thing. This saves around 3 seconds over the previous strat I showed you. This is what I used to do during a long time, before last week I think, because I found something faster, but also way harder. Alright, we are going to do another bouncing Dive. <coughs> bouncing dive jump, but this one is very hard. So, after first statue, you go there, around here, you can call Tez, this, and go with bugs around here, and with Tez, you are going to put yourself in a precise spot, like around here, I think it's good. You can see, yeah. Yeah. You can see a line between bugs and tails, which is uh, slightly well. I don't know the I don't know the English word, but currently bugs is um, higher than tails is. So this is a problem. You have to find a good compromise between the height and distance from the wall. Around here is good. Once you're here. Make Taz face this direction because so you, you can bounce on his head closer to the wall, and you have to do a very precise day bounce dive jump. What is main thing you see here? Yeah, I got it first try. Is first the positioning of Taz. Two, you need to align bugs precisely. So you can see, you can see the, this line here. You have to, to make this line, test and bugs are like, like this. And then you have to be quick enough on your dive jump so you don't lose many height, but if you are too quick, you will just perform this without any hope, so it's done. Just practice it and eventually you may finally do it. Alright, once you're here, you call taste on the switch and go here to the second set of statue. This is about I think it's nine seconds faster than the the previous strat so let's say around twelve seconds faster than the first strat I've shown you. Anyway, once this is done you have to go at the furthest part of statue. So take bugs, chart the wall go there, jump, jump. From here you can call Tez because uh, it's faster. If you don't want one bugs to, to receive plenty of coconuts in the face, you can just call him once you're about here. Alright, go there, hit this thing to make a bridge, and then another you have to hit this monkey, otherwise uh, you will just uh, lose time because you will uh, 
it will uh, throw you coconut. So once you're here, you there are two different things you can do. What I recommend you to do is to hit the monkey, call bugs near the coconuts, and then start by this statue. What I like to do in this place is once I throw a coconut, I take another one and try to make myself in a good angle to throw the next one. And when I'm uh, spinning with Tez, I'm just uh, checking if bugs is uh, indeed in the good uh, spot. So let's do this. You can see that it's. You don't have to be just like this in front of the statue. This will just uh, lose time. Be confident on your throws. Alright, and let's do it. Now this is done, we can access to the bus. There are two ways to get there. The usual way is with bugs. You just jump here, charge your roll. Out this way. And when you are when you are about there, oh yeah, I didn't mention that. When you are rolling like this, you can see the the rolling in Josh is uh, slowly fading. Once uh, it's over, you are in this animation during which you cannot act for a few seconds. So what I recommend you to do is to release the the roll button, so basically the attack button just a bit before the detour is uh, empty. This way, if you keep uh, moving up, for example, you can still move. Alright, once you're there, you call the Taz and go to, to the your entrance of the bus. What is just a bit faster, let's say 2 seconds, is when you're here. It's over with the statue. As soon as you can, you, can, you take control of Taze you fall in the water and dive. Up, uh, you, you swim because swimming is faster and you will get here. Reminder, this, this is where you try to do a, a bouncing dive jump in the second strike that I show you. Once you're there, you just keep uh, spinning to go to the entrance of the bus. Another reminder, if you try to mash the spinning button, you will sometimes uh, stop yourself and uh, lose your momentum. Don't try to mash, just time. Do another spin once the uh, previous one is over. Alright, now we will enter the door to fight the strongest boss of the game. Well, the boss for you some rocks, and you have to make the rocks for just here. But, uh, no, anyway, we can just take bears, bugs and throw it out of the door. This way you don't have to fight the boss. <laughs> we haven't found any name for this, but basically what you have to do is very simple. You take Taz, take control of Taz, with Taz you take bugs and throw bugs at the door. That's it. It's very easy to do. Once this is done, I like to take control of bugs and take this token. You can take those, it doesn't really matter. It's just that I like to to have bugs um, to the controller bugs once I return to the central area. Okay, let's do this. Once you're here, you're about to collect the second token of this era. For this just charge all. At our time there are two things you can do. When you're about here, what I like to do is release roll, call Taze, bounce off of his head, and go there. But if you prefer, you can just keep rolling. And indeed, here this way. This doesn't really matter, honestly. So, you have to dig this rabbit hole. Um, by just jumping and pressing the action button with Taz, which is basically like a dive jump. So, do it. 
Now you can, you can you take control of bugs. You can see this is in the way to enter the rabbit hole. If you're right at a good spot, you can enter the hole anyway. Otherwise, what you can do is to call the test to make him get out of the way. Once this is done, just hold the right button to go this way. See these pillars? When you're about to, to reach the last one, call Tez. So Tez will uh, be like here, in the pillar. You can see that in this particular example, Tez is very close to the edge. So when you bump the pillar, okay, he didn't do it this time, but sometimes Tez can fall. Fall on the pillar like this. There are two things you can do. The first one is as soon as you you saw that uh, Taz is near edge, you can take the control of Taz and just go to the center of the pillar. If it's too late, just take control of Taz, go here and do basically a dive jump, So, except this is a spin jump. Alright, when you, once it's over, go here and there is a switch. To turn on this switch, you need to have both Taz and Bugs on this switch. But you need to be careful about one thing. I do not recommend you to, with Tess, go on the switch and then call bugs. I recommend you to call bugs before jumping on the, the switch. Why is that? It's because you can see this little animation of the switch. If bugs is the, goes on the, the switch while this uh, animation is occurring, the token will dispel and you will have to collect it later, which is about uh, 40 seconds less. So just call, um, okay let's do it again, just call bugs near the edge and then jump. Ok, so token is here. What you can do, and what, uh, what I think Ayash does this, from the edge you can just jump and do a dive jump to collect the token. <coughs> Excuse me. This is really fast. Another thing you can do is, once you once both characters are on the switch, there are a tiny delay before the switch actually turns on. We can try to do this dive jump before the animation occurs. And I think you will collect the token during the animation if you succeed to do so. In fact, I never managed to do so. But if you try and fail, usually bugs will land uh, like this here. So um, you will just be very close to the token. So there's don't really any reason not to try it. Anyway, once we got the token, jump out of this hole and charge on the hole. Go there and we're about to enter our second race. Usually you don't have to release the uh, roll. It will just uh, you will just have enough uh, roll charge to go there. So the dragon chase is divided into three parts. The first part is almost an auto scroller. The dragon is moving by himself. Well, forward. You can just uh, go right or left. Jump. Kind of fly like this. Or split fire. Uh, well, you have to be careful about those guys. I usually speed fire on them, you, but you can just you can just jump over them. The main thing you have to be uh, careful of is this. You can see those things are falling if you are uh, working on them without jumping. This will cost you a lot of time if you fall and a life, which is not a big deal, honestly. I recommend you to jump and fly over every every trap like this. I'm not sure I talked about uh, carrots. The carrots in this game have two purposes. The first one is to give you some more HP when uh, one of your characters is hurt. If your character is at full HP when you collect a carrot, you will just have a carrot in your with you. This doesn't give you much health of 
more health, excuse me, when you're about to get hit. This will only be useful at the end of the run. So, the second part. You can now move freely, well, you can now freely with the dragon. You will go in here, because a lot of those falling rocks. And now, you will try to get to... Hmm? There's no first person holding the dragon, I didn't know. To the last platform we saw, uh, we see, we can see up there. What we can do is just go in the lava and keep holding the fly button like this. It's pretty simple. You may want to jump before going to lava, it's, it's really up to you. In the last part, you have to keep holding down to go down. Yeah. Some of those pillars are falling in your way. Just be careful when you hear this sound and jump. With time you will just remember where they are. What I like to do, and I absolutely don't know if it's for sure, is to jump and fly. Just be careful by doing so, you may end up uh, working in a pillar like this. And this is exactly what I wanted you to show you. Yep, sir! <clears throat> Forget that. At the very end of this section, there is a hole. You don't want to fall into the hole. What you are recommend you to do, even though it's not totally required, is to jump and fly. Well, jumping is obviously required, but you can make it without flying. But there is no reason not to go for, for this, so just jump and fly. Now there is a token. You need to collect it. You can move uh, anywhere on the stage, but uh, there is a loading zone which will bring you back to the Azteca era without the token. So just take the token. Don't think that much. Then this is the only race when you don't want to mash the exit button, the jump per step, because the cursor is on ES to try again. You have to go on no, otherwise you will lose a bit of time. It's not that much, but it's still something. And I think that's it for the for the stake uh, era. One thing I didn't mention is if you failed the if you made the uh, token despawn, you need to go to this race, and once you completed it, you take control of bugs, make a roll, and go back all the way here to get the token. I think I think the switch will still be on, so you have to collect it. Well, I think that's it for this era. Next video we will cover the Arabian era, which is um, a bit more limberetic. And maybe one of the... Maybe the longest era. Well, we'll see this in the next video. See you and thanks for watching.